in a strange way, older people are no longer curious. It's kids that are curious. You know, a five-year-old kid is curious. Ten-year-old kid is curious. Young kids in school, they're interested in these things. So that's when you have to capture the imagination. And when people come to do science, they want to ask the big questions. And there's big questions in life, at least for me and for many, are what makes up our universe? The ultimate question that we're trying to answer in our research is what makes up our universe? What are the fundamental constituents that make up the world around us, us and everything that we can see? So we can break that down into things like the electrons, the nucleus, the atom, but inside that we get smaller and smaller and we actually want to get down to the ultimate entities that make up everything. So to answer these fundamental questions, we actually try to recreate the universe as it last appeared about a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. So what we do is we take protons and we accelerate them almost to the speed of light and then we bring them together and collide them and out of that energy we reproduce the particles that last existed in the early universe such as W bosons, Z bosons and the famous Higgs boson. You make some connection in your brain between one thing happening and the other thing happening and you say, ah, but they're linked in some deep fundamental way and that kind of eureka moment, if you like, the old Archimedes jumping out of the bath and going, I've got it. Um, whenever you get that sort of thing, that's a wow factor, that's, that's fantastic. And just occasionally in your career, you, you, you make these connections and that's such a deep, fundamental, satisfying moment. And hopefully in some of those moments, if you see just that little bit more and if it's truly original then you've contributed something new to the way humans view their world. The only way to make the great breakthrough is to give people the freedom to investigate and to keep an open mind to the outcomes. You never know a priori what you're going to discover otherwise it wouldn't be science. It's very hard to say let's discover this because you don't know what this is. It works the other way around. You leave somebody free, you leave bright people free to investigate as best they can and to understand. And then in that understanding, you never know what will come out. The unexpected will come out often. And it's that unexpected that gives you the next great breakthrough into uh, the next great discovery and the next great application that comes from that. Mm -hmm.